About five years ago, my best friend asked me to watch her dogs for her while she went out of town for vacation. She was going away for a week and had three dogs. I know this is bad, but I don't know exactly what kind of dogs they are. They're a mix of a few breeds and are kind of small, but I'm not really a dog expert. Anyways, I got all the instructions on when to feed them and when to let them outside, even what time they usually went on their walks. I was happy to take care of them because my friend had her own small house and I had two roommates, so it was nice to get away on my own for a bit. The first day and night went great with no problems at all. It was really easy because the dogs are always really well behaved and trained. The second night though, after I had taken the dogs out for the final time of the day and was about to go to bed, I was upstairs and heard the dogs start to bark like crazy from down in the kitchen. I went down to see what it was. The dogs usually always stayed in the kitchen, where their bowls were, and even though they were well trained, they had a divider put up between the living room at night just to be safe. When I got down there, I saw that the dogs were jumping up and down and going wild. I went over and looked out the back door, but didn't see anything outside. Then I realized that I hadn't locked the door, so I quickly locked it and then tried to calm down the dogs. They must have seen some sort of animal or something is what I was thinking, because they usually didn't bark so much. Finally, I was able to calm them down and they were quiet again. I went back upstairs and laid down to go to sleep. I fell asleep for a little while, but woke up again not much later to the sound of the dogs barking again. I went downstairs and saw them once again jumping up and down and barking. I looked around outside and still couldn't see anything. I watched the dogs and noticed that they weren't necessarily barking at the back door, but more so at the closet door that was inside and next to it. I got a bad feeling about this, but I decided to open the closet door. I walked closer and I knew it would be empty, but I just wanted to open it for peace of mind. I got to the handle and just when I was about to grab it, I saw it start to turn on its own. This caused me to back up and immediately run upstairs. I got into the bedroom and locked the door behind me. I heard the sound of someone walking downstairs and the dogs start to go crazy once again. Then I heard footsteps start to come upstairs. At that point, I took out my phone and I called the police. I ran to the far corner of the room and talked to them. The footsteps came up the stairs, but I never heard anyone try to open the door to the room I was in. After the police let me know they would be on their way, I listened closely, but I didn't hear any more noises. I didn't dare move and I kept silent. It felt like forever that I was sitting there listening for any kind of noises, and I fully expected whoever was there to try to come in the room, but the entire time I waited there, and I heard nothing. I knew the person had to be upstairs still, because if they went back downstairs, it would likely set the dogs off again. Finally, I heard the sounds of police arriving coming from downstairs. They made their way into the house through the back door, and the dogs started barking once again. The police went upstairs, and I unlocked the bedroom I was in for them. Then I left the house as they searched the rest of it. After they were done searching the house, they said they couldn't find anybody inside at all. I even went inside with them to search again, but there was nobody in there. I don't know whoever was there because I never saw them, but I really don't know how they left. This happened when I was 18. My grandmother was going out of town for a couple of days and asked if I would watch her place and take care of her plants while she was gone. She had a large plant collection, and I was probably into plants almost as much as her, which is likely why she asked me. I had been to her place many times before. It was about five miles away from my house, but a little closer in the city. It was a very small house, with pretty much just a bedroom, living room, bathroom, and kitchen. The first day, I got there and took care of all the plants that she had. After that, I didn't really do a whole lot for the rest of the day. That night, though, as I was laying in bed and about to fall asleep, I just happened to look out the bedroom window. In the bedroom, the window was right there on top of the bed basically, and you could see right outside. I saw a man walk right past me on the other side of the window, literally within a foot of my head. It really freaked me out and I sat up in bed and looked out the window. Whoever this guy was, he didn't really seem to notice me at all and kept on walking towards the front of the house. I watched him and he stopped in front of the living room window about 15 feet away from me. I ducked down but he didn't even look in my direction. I couldn't tell much about the man because of how dark it was other than that he was wearing a hood and had a backpack with him. 
I watched him reach into the backpack and then strike the living room window with something, and I heard glass breaking at that point. All I could think to do was get under the bed and hide. I crawled under and covered the side of the bed with a blanket. I heard the man walk around inside and go towards the kitchen. Once he was inside the house for about a minute, I knew hiding under the bed wasn't the best place, and I had the strong urge to leave, so without hesitating, I got out from under the bed and tried to open the bedroom window. I opened it very slowly and carefully, trying not to make a sound. I could hear the man still seemed to be in the kitchen at this point. I knew I'd have about 15 seconds if he decided to walk this way, so I started to hurry up. Finally, I was able to get it open, and I climbed out the window, and once I was outside, ran to my car that was parked in the driveway. I got inside as fast as I could and drove all the way back home. It wasn't until then when I told my parents everything, and then they called the police. I feel really dumb that I didn't call the police sooner, because when they arrived at the house, the man was completely gone. He had stolen a few things, but I don't believe he was ever caught. This happened a few years ago. My friend Jeremy had just moved into a new house that he was going to be temporarily living in for a few months. It wasn't all that far from me, which I was excited about, but he told me just after about a week of living there that he couldn't take it anymore and he wanted to move out. He said the house was really creeping him out and weird things kept happening. I wasn't really buying it and he told me I should just stay in the house for myself. I agreed, so we decided to swap places for a few days. I was really skeptical of whatever Jeremy was afraid of and figured he just had mice or something like that. I got to his house and saw that it was pretty old looking and not in the greatest of shape. Jeremy showed me around a little bit and then left. I found it funny at the time how afraid he seemed to be of the house. After he left, I was confident that nothing would scare me. I hung out for a bit and nothing strange happened at all. It wasn't until nighttime when I was headed upstairs when I heard what sounded like a large crash of things coming from the basement. It was extremely loud, so I headed downstairs to the basement to take a look. I got down there and flicked on the light and didn't see anything out of place. There wasn't really anything down there at all, just a few boxes, but they hadn't fallen over. Still, I figured there was an explanation and I went back upstairs, but I couldn't help but be a little bit creeped out. It was pretty late at that point and I got ready for bed and was just about to fall asleep when I heard the distinct sound of scratching coming from the bedroom window. I opened my eyes and looked over to the window. The scratching stopped and I saw nothing. I went over to the window and looked outside of it. It was on the second floor of the house, so I don't know who would be able to reach it from up there, and there were no tree branches or anything scraping it. At this point, I was officially spooked. I really didn't think anything strange was going to happen when I got there but now I saw why Jeremy was so creeped out by this place. I immediately left and got in my car and drove all the way back to my place and slept on the couch for the night. Jeremy ended up staying at my place for a few days until he was able to get in line with another house and move out. I don't know what was up with that place.